uh, if you were here yesterday, we're following a similar format. Um, everyone will have five minutes, and um, this session grew out of the program committee realizing how many great talks about essentially the state of the map in different countries um, had been proposed. So this is um, a world tour of efforts throughout, uh, throughout the globe. Um, we do have some changes um, to the schedule. So we're going to start with Vitor George. Um, then Dami Sonowicki is going to stand in for Kazim Coyote Olabi. Um, then we'll have Andy Mabbitt, Arun Ganesh, um, Jeffrey Kariga will stand in for Victor Namisi. Um, and then we will have uh, Francois Xavier Lamour Tardio, who, um, if you were here yesterday, um, Wendy Delva wasn't able to make it, but um, they are both from Haiti, and so F Francois will um, present. And Ahasanul Hoke will present last. So I'm sure I butchered all those names. Apologies. Um, but just to let you know uh, what the schedule is. Thank you. Hello, I'm Vitor. I'm from the Brazilian OpenStreetMap community. I work for Inframazonia.org, which is a platform for environmental journalism on about the Amazon region. We have a lot of maps in there. We have OpenStreetMap uh, river data in our website. Uh, and I'm here to talk about Mapazonia. Uh, Mapazonia is a project to map collab collaboratively uh, on OpenStreetMap, the Amazon region. It's a project that started uh, last year on state of the map Argentina, where the Latin American community got together to think about uh, a project that we could like uh, have more uh, work, uh, in more interchange between the, the community. And we had the support of the, the HOT, the Humanitarian Open City Map team, to use the tasking manager. I'll show you. Uh, we selected two areas in the Amazon region. Uh, we are focused on mapping rivers, road infrastructure, and if possible, forest cover. Uh, for those who do not know tasking manager, uh, the workflow is pretty simple. You have to have a, a login on OpenStreetMap, and there is several tasks on Tasking Manager. One of the tasks for this, this task is for Bolivia. It's an area in Bolivia that uh, we are working on. Uh, when you enter on Tasking Manager, you select an area, for example, the, the, the squares without colors, like the transparent ones, are squares that are not being worked yet. So you can select one, lock it, uh, open this area on JAWS or ID, uh, map roads and map rivers, and if you want, you can map anything else. And come back to Tasking Manager, and if you already finished the, 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 the area, you can mark, mark as finished, and someone else can uh, check if the work's well done and, and mark that as revised. So we have for this area we have 82% and 50% validated. It's uh, our, our mo most advanced area. Uh, but we are exploring another workflows, uh, which is we are launching now in, in, in the state of the map, which is uh, Mapazonia Roads. Mapazonia Roads, it's a project to map uh, road connections on OpenStreetMap for the Amazon region. It is a project uh, based on a project I did in, in Brazil five years ago called Brazil 250 Cities, uh, which uh, it was a script that I ran checking the connections between the two, 250 most biggest cities in, on Brazil. And this script checked if there is a valid route on OpenStreetMap. So we could check how, how was the, the connectivity in the, in the country. And in, in 10 months, months we, we went from 
37% to 81% of connectivity. So, yeah, and, and the Brazilian community at, the, at this time was very smaller than, than it is today. So, uh, please visit our website, mapazonia.org. Uh, over there you have all information needed to, uh, to understand how to engage on the project. Over there, there is also the, the tasking, uh, the, the links for the tasking manager. And we have also the website for Mapazonia Roads. It's, well, it's in here. Uh, over there, you can check what is broken, what, what is broken in connectivity in, in, in the Amazon. We have uh, all these Brazilian cities. We don't have cities for the other countries of the Amazon. There is, there is nine countries in, in the Amazon. Uh, but we have, until now, uh, all the cities for Brazil, and, and you can check what is broken and help map. Uh, I'll be here on the conference. If you ha uh, want to know more about the platform, the details, I'll be glad to help. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Dami. Um, well, I will start by first saying um, I don't think I'm worthy to, to be here to speak to such a great audience as this, um, simply because I'm probably the least contributor to the OpenStreetMap. And secondly, because I missed my way to my hotel room last night, so <laughs> I probably don't know how to use a map. Um, I'm giving this talk on behalf of my colleague um, Kazim. Kazim has been a great contributor to um, OpenStreetMap, and I'm, I'm just there. Um, so I work for eHealth Africa. Um, we are based in Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Liberia, Guinea. And we support public health and um, improve health delivery systems using um, technology. So. Before I continue this talk, I would like to ask a quick question. So, um, how many of us were at the HOT Summit in April? Okay. How many of us saw the presentation from eHealth Africa? Okay. So, just um, very statistically low. So, um, this is meant to be just like a short follow-up. Um, it's a short session. So, I will be talking about... Um, briefly about the past things that we have achieved um, using OpenStreetMap. Um, touch on a few things that we are doing currently at um, eHealth Africa, and then talk on you know what we are hoping to work on in the future. So uh, I won't try to educate us about um, OpenStreetMap because um, everyone here probably knows more than I do. But hopefully, apart from telling you what we are doing, I would like to show us how awesome the work we do in this community and what impact we are making, especially in developing countries. So, um, how many of us know what polio is? Great. So, we all know what polio is and we know how um, polio um, kills children. So, what we've been able to do um, using OSM base map is to um, create base maps that help to track um, different people in remote communities and just to help vaccinate these children to ensure that every child is vaccinated. And what we do is we need to identify um, where different communities are. Um, so I, I must first start by saying polio is very common in um, northern Nigeria. And if if, if anyone has been to northern Nigeria before, it's not like New York. Um, it's very, very sparsely mapped. Um, you go around, you just see huts in different places. So we need to find where these people are, and we need to make sure that they are vaccinated. So what we do is to use, build the base map, and then go to these um, 
communities to map those communities. And then the other thing we've been able to support with OpenStreetMap is vaccine delivery. Um, well, I'm sure I'm probably going to get it, no, but has anyone gone to um, the hospital before and you didn't have um, drugs or you weren't given vaccines? No one. So this happens a lot in northern Nigeria. But what OpenStreetMap has helped us to do is to create effective routing and to actually get to these, um, get the drugs to these hospitals. And we've done that and we've been able to do that with the support of OpenStreetMap. Um, and we have a 99% success rate in Kano. And we've been able to replicate that success to move to Bauchi State. And we are extending that to two other states. Um, we've also been able to support um, Ebola in Nigeria and in Liberia. So what we've done is to improve the base map in those areas and, you know, and to map those areas. Um, the next thing that we've been able to do is to support few data collection um, with OpenStreetMap. So we create geocached areas and we create predefined routes to get to these areas. There are areas in Nigeria called hard to reach areas when you go to deliver health um, health services. So what we do is to first identify what is making these areas hard to reach. And using OpenStreetMap, we create routes to get to those areas effectively. Now, what are we working on? Um, we've recently, um, um, is there anyone that doesn't know about the insurgencies that is going on in northern Nigeria? Yeah, so um, we, we, we've been having a lot of attacks, and recently I got a, an email day before yesterday from my office that there have been 18 attacks in, in I mean, there have been attacks in, different 18 attacks in the last 10 days, and that's a lot. And what this does is it causes internally displaced persons. And when, when people are internally displaced, there is a very, very likelihood of diseases being spread around these, these different places. So what we do, what we are working on currently is to map open street map to identify these different host communities and then to find out ways to improve the health conditions and the nutrition conditions um, in these areas. So I, I'm going to leave us um, with this um, before I close. So let us just for one moment imagine, you know, if there were no maps to reach these people. And imagine if these people were just there and there were no services reaching these people. What would become of them? So what OpenStreetMap has been able to do for us is not just to think of helping these people, but it has actually helped us to help these people in little ways and making huge difference. And that's only possible because of this OpenStreetMap community. So I want to say thank you very much to everyone that contributes to the community. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Andy Mabbott, and that's my Twitter name if you want to abuse me during the presentation. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about Mapper Mercia, which is the uh, name that we use for a small group of local mappers in the English West Midlands. It's a loosely defined region, we're not fussy if you live 50 yards over the border, we'll still talk to you. Uh, but we um, are centred on Birmingham, which is my hometown, uh, and we meet regularly, we meet at least once a month. We try to be highly social and welcoming. Uh, because we like it, we meet in a pub in the winter months and we have beer and food. Uh, in the summer months, we go out and do some mapping. Um, and we welcome new editors. One of the things we do is, to, we, one of the reasons we exist is, is so that new people have a place that they can come to, to meet other mappers, to get help with mapping. That's how I got started. I went to the, one of the meetings. I said, I'm, I'm interested in OpenStreetMap, but I don't know how to edit. Somebody pulled out a laptop and for 15 minutes taught me how to use JOSM, uh, 
just like that. You know, the help was there. Nobody questioned why I was doing it. Nobody wanted payment. Uh, the help was instantly available. Um, and then I was given some ideas as to what I could usefully do to help with mapping. Uh, and my questions were answered by people who had probably been asked them several times before, but were quite willing to share their knowledge with me. And I like to think I now pay that forward by welcoming other new people. Um, in the summer, as I say, we have mapping parties. Uh, it doesn't matter if you can't get to all of them. I, I missed one by coming here. But we, uh, we print out on bits of paper the areas we're going to map. We choose one of the outlying regions or a part of the city. Uh, and we go and do a couple of hours mapping in the longer summer evenings. Uh, and then we go to the pub and meet up and compare notes. And then over the next few days, we put the stuff that we've surveyed into the uh, map itself using whichever editor people prefer to use. We also support armchair mapping, which I know is um, not very popular with some people, but we have some members who can't get out very much. And so they do the armchair mapping, and if they hit a problem, they ask somebody to go and do a survey for them. Uh, some of you who came to um, State of the Map in Birmingham two years ago will remember Mike Duffy, who sadly passed away last year. Uh, and for a while, he had a period of ill health, and he did this. Um, he put all the garden fences around, or the, the outlines of all the gardens of houses in North Birmingham, where I live, um, and drew uh, many of the buildings as well. Uh, he spent hours doing that, but because he couldn't get out uh, and do the surveying so much as he had done in previous years, that was the way he was able to contribute. And every time he hit a problem, like uh, you know, the aerial photography wasn't clear, he would ask one of us to go and check for him uh, and, and do that little bit that he wasn't able to complete. So it's a way of supporting people in, in the manner of the talk that we had recently on diversity. You know, people who can't contribute in the mainstream can still be supported through, through this network. We... Uh, also exist on a mailing list and on social media. We have a Twitter account called Mapper Mercia. And in the last couple of days while I've been here, my colleagues have set up a Facebook page for Mapper Mercia. So I would like to ask some of you, please, to like that Facebook page for us so that we can uh, get a short name for it. So just search for Mapper Mercia as it's written there on Facebook and like it for me. That would be great. Thank you. And we have a website as well, should you wish to go and have a look at that, where we describe several of our projects. And within the website, you will find our blog several special maps which I'll describe in a minute and we run quarterly projects so the last quarter of the year we tried to complete all the road names in our region and make sure that any that were missing were found any discrepancies were ironed out by a site visit to see what was actually signposted and so on the current quarterly project is delivery related so we're trying to map all the post boxes, all the drop-off points for parcels for Amazon and eBay and things like that, uh, and the various depots for parcel delivery companies and so on. And in the quarter after that, we're probably going to do nature reserves. So we'll try to get all the designated areas of land properly mapped, all the bird hides, visitor centers, areas of marshland, uh, places that you're not supposed to go to protect nesting birds and so on. Uh, and this focuses people's efforts. It gives them a target. We have a, a list of things to do that they can tick things off. And at the end of the quarter, hopefully, it will be complete. And you have that great sense of satisfaction when you complete a to-do list, as I'm sure you're all familiar with. We've mapped every building in the city, or at least all those we know about. I mean, obviously, people keep knocking things down and building new ones, so we have some work to maintain it. We believe we have the best mapped city in the UK, if not in Europe. Uh, because we have this wonderful community supporting the mapping. So if I drive past a new building site on my way somewhere and I can't stop, I'll remember it and I'll ask somebody local to go and check it out for me and do us an update and keep an eye on it. We respond to change. We keep an eye on the major developments in the city. So, for instance, we had a bypass in the Selly Oak region, which we mapped as under construction, and we had somebody on the ground with a mobile phone, and as the ribbon was cut, they said, yes, you can change the tag on the map now, it's open. It took Ordnance Survey about six weeks to notice, and I think it took Google Maps even longer than that. So we're quite proud of things like that. And we do that for several of the other big infrastructure projects in the city, sometimes working with partner organisations. We produced a gritting map by working with local authorities, either willingly or if they weren't willing, we used freedom of information to get the data out of them. And then in the end, they all used our map 
to advertise it to the public. Uh, and we got lots of press coverage, and the press also used it. And what we did, we mapped all the routes that are gritted in winter when it's icy, so it's safer to drive on. Uh, a simple task, but we did a lot of armchair mapping around getting those tags in by using the data from the local authority. We produced a heritage map with all of our listed buildings, plaques, and public artworks, which is mostly the work of one person, Brian Prangle. And I think Brian might be following the live transcription. So hello, Brian. Uh, and uh, we had a lot of support for Brian because he would say, you know, I know there's some public art in this area. I don't know what it is. So somebody else would go out and survey it and tag it so it would appear on Brian's lovely rendered map, which you can see there. And you'll find that on the website I mentioned earlier. Oh, and we also did something called State of the Map uh, two years ago. Some of you were present to that. So I have a lot of sympathy for the people who've organized this wonderful event for us here because we went through that pain as well. So what lessons can you draw from what we've done? Well, there's a lot of hard work. You have to keep going. You have to support each other. You have to be patient with new users because they're the lifeblood of the organization. And with the organizations we're dealing with, local authority reacts like an oil tanker. It doesn't turn very quickly. Support each other. Be aware that people's commitment levels vary. Some people can do an hour a month. Some will do three hours a day if they're retired or have spare time. Uh, respect each other and work together collaboratively. Don't start edit warring. Uh, reach out to the community. We looked for who the local mappers were and invited them to come along to our meetings and to local organizations as well. We work with the local media to tell them what we're doing and to get them to write about uh, OpenStreetMap because a lot of people still don't know what we do. Uh, and we try to think about working with the community, not just building the map. It's very much a two-pronged approach. Uh, we vary the program. We do different things so everybody can find their little niche to work on. We believe that mapping should be fun. And we believe that this is something that you can all do. And I'd like to encourage you to work with your local mappers in a similar way. Those are my contact details. I'm happy to talk to you about this later. Thank you all very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Arun Ganesh. Um, I'm coming from India. Uh, drawing maps is something I've been doing since I was very small, probably because I could not draw humans to scale. Um, so I'd like to talk about Mapping India more from my experience as a volunteer mapper on OpenStreetMap for the last many years, and uh, why it's such a complex thing. So we probably have to look a little bit about the history of uh, mapping in India. And India and maps have a lot to go do with each other. For the concept of India itself did not exist uh, till 200 years back with the arrival of the British East India Company. And they started on one of the biggest surveys known to man, which was the uh, most authentic scientific survey at that time, called the Great Trigonometry Survey of India. Uh, it started as a five-year project, and it took 60 years to complete. And uh, at the end of it, they had the first borders drawn of the Indian Empire uh, of Britain. And 100 years later, uh, another thing happened on the map, and when India got independence, a lawyer was given the task of drawing borders again to split uh, India into different parts. And uh, this is lines on paper which cost the lives of 400,000 people. And uh, it's an area which is inhabited by 25% of the world today and has a significant impact on the geopolitics of the whole world. Uh, so this is sort of maps in India, and uh, it's something we need to remember that maps change lives. Uh, it's not just things we draw on paper. It actually has a real-world impact on the whole world. So uh, personally, for me, uh, I found OpenStreetMap in 2008. This was a time when I was making maps on Wikipedia. And uh, there was a mention of a project called OpenStreetMap, editable map of the whole world. And I was very curious what it is. And uh, I went to the site, and it looked like this <laughs> at that time in 2008. And I thought, OK, uh, this probably can zoom in. And the more you zoom in, it's the same thing. It's just blank. <laughs> this is how it was in 2008. Uh, but there was this button called Edit. And I tried it out. And it was interesting to see. Uh, and over the next few months and a couple of years, uh, I went around mapping my city on OpenStreetMap. And uh, it took two years to do. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. And it, got me, it gave me a chance to explore the city as well. Uh, 
So how, how did I do this? For one, you, you had satellite imagery, so you could trace uh, all the roads, but then you don't have the street names. And uh, so I would just go to the city corporation, the municipal office, and ask them that you must be having a map of the city. Can you give it to me? And uh, nobody's ever asked them for maps. And they would ask me, who are you? Why do you want maps? What are you going to do with this? And I never tell them it's a student project. I just want to know where the toilets in my area is. And they would give me these maps. And the city has maps like this. And uh, it's divided into 50, 150 parts, the whole city. And each part has a map like this. And this is not to scale. Uh, it's more of a CAD map drawn. And this is what the city uses. And there's no one single map of the whole city which has all the street names. Uh, these maps are distributed throughout the municipal offices in the city. And you have to go to them one by one, requesting for the maps, collect them all. And um, I would look at these maps, match it with the satellite imagery, and put on the roads. So, yeah. so the license of this is unknown. Uh, but yeah, when you would ask them, they would say that you can do whatever you want with it, uh, and that's about it. Uh, so we had the map of Chennai uh, at that time in 2010. And uh, the next thing was, we have this map. Now, what do we do with this? Uh, me and a couple of friends, we came across this interesting idea to make an application to have the bus stops in the city mapped. And we use OpenStreetMap for the app. So this was in 2010. Uh, the first application using OpenStreetMap in India as a way to get more people to know there's something called OpenStreetMap and start contributing to the map. And uh, this worked. Uh, this came in the papers. It gave a lot of press coverage. A lot of people started knowing about OpenStreetMap, and people started mapping. And uh, it also made me realize the importance of just going ahead and doing something. Uh, it was mostly me who mapped the entire city. And uh, I had no money with me. Uh, all I had was a lot of time. Uh, being a student, and I just went around and did it, and a lot of things happen. Uh, and it's just amazing the kind of impact just one person can create. So based on my mapping of a city, um, I looked about the whole country. So unlike other countries, India does not have an import of data, and you have to start from scratch. So how did we go around it? Um, the first step, mark the location of all the cities in the country. Uh, mark airports, which you can see clearly on satellite imagery. In every city, mark the major transportation routes, transit stations, map the national railway network, national highway network, location of towns, and in the blank areas, map out the rivers and forests to fill in the space. And then the important thing is to spread the word. So the local people have access to uh, the map, and they see some starting data, and they can start filling it out. So this came from my idea of how Wikipedia works and how you create stub articles. So you create some C data all over the map, and then people start they are something to start with instead of seeing a blank map, like how I did. Uh, so OSM in 2005 in India. Uh, still, it's a very small number of mappers in the country who have contributed more than 50% of the data. Uh, the National Highway Network and the Railway Network is complete. We have some great Germans who are mapping the power grid of the entire country with the voltage levels. Uh, thank you to them. It's something which even the government would not have. Uh, we have mapped all the major watersheds and water forest areas. Uh, six major cities have usable street level data. And uh, OSM mapping is now part of an experimental educational program uh, for students in the country. Uh, we also launched OpenStreetMap.in with uh, the correct boundaries of the country uh, according to the government. And this makes a big difference in domestic use in India. So the big challenge. Uh, the data is quite poor in India. So this is the data density of India and OSM. Uh, if you compare it, the extract is 150 kilobytes per million people. And for a country of similar density like Belgium, it's 18 MB. So that's a long way to go. Uh, there's challenges in policy. Uh, existing map data is restricted. It's difficult to uh, get. Uh, there are policies in place which restrict serving. And uh, policy change is slow, but uh, things are changing. And also, who are these maps for? All the map data is in English, and less than 10% of the people know English. 20% of the population have internet access, so that's how, much, how many people can access OpenStreetMap. And the big uh, OSM challenge as well. Uh, India is just non-standard, and this goes with a lot of the developing world. Uh, this is a very important person on the streets who helps you fight dehydration uh, and keeps you alive in the heat. Uh, but yeah, how do you map him? He's on the street. Is he living there? Is it a shop? Is it an amenity? Is it a barrier on the footpath? Uh, how do you tag this? So I come across this quote from a saint in India. Uh, he said, maps are good, but when you see the country itself and look again at the maps, what a great difference you find. And this again from my experience traveling. 
uh, I see the map, I see what is going around in the real world, and uh, there are all these open questions. Like, what does this map really mean? Can this really help? Uh, are the people part of the map? Who is doing this for whom? And uh, these are just things that we need to think about in future. And uh, yeah, it's just exciting to see how things go. Um, yeah, that's it. So uh, you can contact me on Twitter or PlaneMind, and you can also find me at the Mapbox booth for the rest of the afternoon. Thank you. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Geoffrey Katrega from Uganda. And uh, I just want to share with you my uh, story with mapping with OSM. And uh, I'm glad to say, I think I'm living the mapper's dream right now. Because uh, the mapper's dream is to attain the state of the map. So being here is really a big experience for me to meet all of you wonderful uh, awesome community. Uh, so, the Ugandan mapping style, what can we uh, learn from the way we do it in, in Uganda? Uh, we have a project called Mapping Day, and basically it's about uh, creating a network of enthusiastic mappers in Uganda. And how do we do it? We target university students. Uh, one of the challenges of building a community of OSM in Uganda is uh, lack of access to internet and even computers. So one of the easiest way uh, to do it is to go to universities because you find students who are having laptops and have access to internet. So we target those. And how do we do this? Uh, with uh, grants from, for example, the Indigo Trust, we are able to move around Uganda doing mapping. Uh, Mapping Day is a project as, that is run by Fruits of Thought, which is a local NGO in Uganda, and it has really uh, done some good work. Um, I'm a product of Mapping Day. Uh, one day, I came across a poster of a mapping challenge. I was at university, so I said, let me try it out. And in the challenge, uh, they wanted the best three people. And I'm glad to say I was one among the best three. And now I'm here. So after moving around and mapping, we moved to different universities and tried to uh, create mapping communities. Uh, we create OSM communities by having a club of students. Uh, we train them in how to use the OSM and encourage them to continue mapping. And they are continuing the mapping by uh, arranging their own mapping days. I think mapping by day is what you call here a mapping party. We prefer to call it mapping day in Uganda, and it's really working for us because on a monthly basis, students really uh, do some good mapping. So I've done this in all universities in Uganda, and can say the community is growing. Uh, right now, Mapping Day is uh, mapping for climate change awareness in Uganda, and it's collaborating with Sevilla. So we are trying to uh, map with uh, people in uh, climate change uh, associations and teach them how to use the OSM and in their activities. Now, from Kampala to Dar es Salaam, uh, from my experience with Mapping Day, I'm glad to say that uh, I'm now working with the humanitarian open street map in Tanzania. Um, the uh, mapping supervisor on the project is called uh, Daraman Huria, and I'll tell you a little bit about this project. Um, every year, every year, seasonal rains cause devastating effects in Dar es Salaam. Uh, Dar es Salaam is one of the fastest growing cities in Africa, but uh, it is facing challenges due to unplanned settlement. And some of these areas where there are currently no maps are the most affected. 
So we are using uh, community mapping to try and solve this. We engage university students in collaboration with community members. We show them and teach them how to map. And they put themselves on the map. And in doing this, they're sending a message to the government showing that we also exist and we need help when there is flooding. Uh, I'd like to end here and say thank you all. I'm very glad to be here. Thank you. Hello. Hello. I'm doing this presentation from one of my colleagues, Wendy, who cannot be uh, yesterday for the, his pre presentation. So I will present you uh, OSM community in Haiti. So we have three, three main uh, communities in Haiti. The community, um, you see the logo on the, buff, on the top. It's the first um, community created in uh, 2010 after the earthquake. The both uh, below communities are created um, with the support of HRT and USAID. Uh, it was a, a project of Saint Mark in 2012 and uh, Cosman in 2013. So you, you can see a map of the communities. You have um, in the capital city, uh, Cosma, and the uh, other in the north, on the, in the center of the country. Um, this is uh, the main activity uh, the community uh, 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 made. Uh, for example, training by the local government, the civil protection. They are doing two uh, uh, using uh, drone UAV technology with uh, CART ONG and uh, some other, other um, uh, foundation and organization. And they are doing some meeting, for example, Christmas ma mapping in one year, in each year, or CART Choco. So, but the, the problem is uh, the, the committee was created uh, with the support of uh, international organization or national um, NGO. But uh, me, I have a problem because um, when the NGO or international organization are not in AET, what the local, co uh, local communities can, uh, can uh, do. So I, um, I uh, uh, prepare and uh, I am uh, trying to implement um, uh, training by the local communities. So I use... Um, a meeting point, IT communautaire, it is a meeting point for local communities in the capital city. So I try to, in the first uh, step, to um, ask uh, people to draw a map on the paper and after uh, to go to UMAP uh, um, online, online tool and uh, to ask them to, to draw a polygon, a line or the point. So it is... Um, for me, easier to learn uh, um, UMAP in the first uh, before to go to OSM, and uh, for example, GOSM. And uh, the, the result is uh, after they can create um, a map on UMAP, and we can see an uh, initiative. For example, this, this map was created to see positive action in Cité Soleil, one of the cities in the metropolitan area, the mo one of the most uh, insecure uh, cities in the uh, metropolitan area. Thank you for your attention.
Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Asan. I'm from Bangladesh. Uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, so uh, I have a lot of things actually to uh, tell from Bangladesh, but it's very difficult to accommodate all these things in five minutes. And uh, at the very last time, I got to know that I have to present. And uh, thank you very much uh, to Eleanor giving, giving me the chance. Um, actually, uh, you, you know that Bangladesh actually is a very dense country. Uh, it's uh, around four, 1,400 people living in per square kilometer, or in Mongolia, uh, per square kilometer people are living 0 0.02. So the, now you can compare actually how dense it is. Uh, but uh, and uh, in Dhaka city, uh, our capital is Dhaka, and uh, almost 25 million people are living in Dhaka city. It's uh, too much crowded, but don't get afraid. If you visit Bangladesh, then uh, you will love it. I, I believe. Uh, due to the people of Bangladesh and the natural scenery outside of Dhaka. Um, uh, this is the map actually uh, for open, uh, I cannot uh, show you all the area. So in 2010-11, the OSM map was just blank. Uh, it, in 2012, it was, uh, has been started through a project uh, from the one university in Bangladesh, Buet, and after that, after two months, it was their one uh, sessional project, and then it finished. And that side I was out of uh, country, and uh, when I came back in the end of 2012, then I started uh, to pushing this OSM, uh, and I uh, still am trying to spread it all over the country. And um, now you can you can see that uh, before it was the almost blank, and now we are getting the data, uh, uh, like all the household and all these things. It's not the for all over the country; it's, it's uh, depending on the specific area. And this is the completed task after I coming back. Uh, if, if you see my edit, then you will not get uh, too much edits for, uh, from my side. But uh, what I started, uh, my background is yes, I started to teach, teach people. And I targeted different universities and government officials. I am pushing uh, this OSM thing in the government policy as well. Uh, I am I'm GIS consultant. I am working with different organization. And people are hiring me to give the GIS uh, uh, training. So I am uh, cutting my GIS sessions and uh, giving the OSM part also. So I, I am pushing the OSM everywhere. So hopefully within few years, actually, uh, whole Bangladesh will be mapped, I believe. And these are the completed uh, uh, mapping we have done uh, in partner with, uh, we have a strong community now. Um, uh, not all are active, but uh, I tried to make a community and now they are stable. And uh, I met some trainers as well. So I'm the only one person I cannot uh, teach everybody. So now they are able to train, so it's a spreading. And uh, we have some upcoming events as well in, in plan. Uh, these are the different area of Bangladesh. And I have a, one plan that is the Sundarban mangrove forest mapping, uh, where the oil spilling happened. So I will create a task very soon. Then I will request you guys to uh, do some mapping for us as well. And uh, uh, this is actually uh, I, uh, I brought some uh, impact uh, uh, mapping and its impact as uh, how many houses actually living there with the population in different area uh, in uh, uh, different slum in the Dhaka and some other cities. And the uh, training, uh, uh, I have given training to 20 researchers and teachers and then the WASA officers is the WASA is the water supply authority of uh, Bangladesh and then GIS specialist and I targeted GIS specialist as well that they are also the key player. So uh, so if they understand then it will go faster. And then the students, uh, more than 350 students uh, already got training. And upcoming events is like this, I already told that uh, these are the plan and uh, some organization they are also working in Bangladesh so we, we are, our community have a collaboration with them. So whenever they need then uh, they are asking us then we are uh, helping them to uh, map that area. And the data, data, different kind of data actually we are trying to upload uh, and uh, yeah, uh, in the map and uh, stakeholders nowadays we are getting the stakeholders from the government and non-government agencies and then for the navigation as well. And the community is actually rising, so uh, it's a hope. Uh, and after finishing uh, successful uh, mapping, then we are taking some photos, uh, group, toge uh, group photos together. And this is the thing. And we also observed and uh, different uh, uh, days also, how to same and then missing maps as well. 
and uh, uh, it's not that like uh, like some projects that uh, project started and uh, after two months mapping is finished so we, we also thought about that uh, sustainability then training we are always giving the training to the new volunteers and then uh, we are creating the trainer schools from uh, we're targeting the uh, university students they are very good so we i believe in youth and uh, and they are really uh, doing great and uh, local international NGO staffs, we are also training so that uh, for their project purposes, they can use this open street map and then advocacy to government organizations as well. And we have, if you want to find us, then uh, we have a Facebook group, Open Street Map Bangladesh and Twitter. And uh, there is a, uh, in the open case data blog, I have an interview for the country, state of the map in Bangladesh. You'll, you'll find a detailed story there. And this is myself, Asan. So uh, hope to see you again. Thank you very much for listening my talk. So thank you very much. I, I feel like incredibly grateful to have been given the opportunity to hear all these presentations, which is just amazing work. So um, let's do one more round of applause for everybody that presented. And um, you know, right now it's lunch. Um, we are not having a formal Q&A for this session, but um, you have until 2.30 to eat and chat and relax. And I'm sure that everyone here would love to talk to you about their projects. Thank you.